What if I were to ask you guys, what is the strongest solo PvP class in the Elder Scrolls Online? Most of you guys will probably say the Dragonite, the Stamden, the Nightblade, but I'm here to tell you that you're completely wrong. Now I know what you're thinking. Horcrux has just been edgy at the beginning of his video, nah, just so I'll watch it. But no, I actually mean this. This build that I am currently running on my Sorcerer makes the Sorcerer the best 1vx class literally of all time i have not had more success on any other class than my sorcerer running this build and it's not your your hit and run sorcerer you streak three times and you dark deal no this is a sorcerer where you can face tank groups of people and get away with it unscathed it actually functions better with a group of people on you as hard as that is to believe and i do apologize this is going to be a very long build video because i want to really drive home how this class works what makes it tick and why it is so strong and maybe at the end of the video you will be convinced at the end of the day that the sorcerer is indeed better than the dragonite when it comes to 1vx so without further ado guys let's hop into the video Welcome back ladies and gentlemen hopefully you enjoyed watching the clips nearly as much as i enjoyed making them this is by far the most fun i've had in the Elder scrolls online in quite a while i've never really played stand builds until as of late the past couple of months and guys i'm having an absolute blast on this build so let's go over why this build is effective why it is potentially better than the dragonite for 1vx content so let's take a look at the character sheet here's everything semi buff this is not fully buffed because we do not have access to continuous attack yada yada 
with our buffs on the back bar. We're getting around 5,600 weapon and spell damage. With one of our sets, spoiler alert, Rallying Cry, we will have over 6k weapon and spell damage, not including continuous, which will bolster us up to about 6,750, something like that. Our spell penetration is sitting at a comfortable 11k. Spell critical is actually pretty high. We're around 41%, which is super strong. Crit resist will go up to 3k. And one thing I need to know while we're on the subject of Rallying Cry, actually, no, I'll save it for later. So take a look at our recoveries there are some alternatives i'm going to talk about in this build video okay i'm going to show you guys a proper rotations why we're running the sets the way we do why we skill prioritize the way that we do i'm going to explain everything so if you already know a lot about the sorcerer maybe you can skip through the timestamps. but if you really want to get into the the, the the nitty gritty in this build please pay attention and watch it till the end i'm gonna go over everything okay so Naturally, we're sitting around 30k health. I am a dark elf on this build. Now, you can go amalgamation in different ways. You could go Khajiit, which would actually be really good because we do have really high damage in general. So, crit damage is just icing on the cake. Our heals are astronomical. As you saw in the intro clips there, we is able to tank not only 6 AD, okay? We're also able to tank the entire resource of guards attacking us. I wanted to explain to you why we're able to do that here in just a moment. So, we have Smoke Bear Haunch. You can either run this or the cheaper alternative is going to be Jewels of Misrule, okay? Mundus wise, we are going with the lover. Now, if you're struggling with sustained issues, you saw I'm only running like 1200 recoveries and you may say since we are vampire stage three with the tri potion active, it's 1300 and 1400 respective. You may say that this is not enough recovery to sustain you. Trust me, it is. Once we go over the skill build, you'll see why. And there is an alternative skill build, which I will also cover, which you will have to have more recovery on. So if you want to go the alternate route, you can swap this from the lover to the serpent. It'll all make sense in a moment, okay? Vampire stage three, you absolutely have to have it, okay? When it comes to potions, I'm always going to be rocking the, the tri-stat potions. Now, there are these other potions that you can possibly run on the alternative build. These are really special because it is going to give you a health bump. You want to save your potion for when your health gets low, okay? You do not have a on-demand burst heal, so this kind of acts like your burst heal. So it's important for you to rock potions that have some sort of burst heal component to them. These are really special because it gives you your uh, magic recovery. This is going to give you a health boost and it's also going to give you your crit chance on both of your bars okay to start off you may have guessed it is master's dual wield now you want nerd hone on your main hand because this does give you slightly more damage than running sharpened overall we are running double dot poisons these are pretty important on the build because we are running marslix which i will cover here in just a moment on the off hand we are running sharpened there is a variant where you'll run charge i'll cover that here in just a moment on our back bar, again, surprise, surprise, I can see it in your eyes, it's me, it's me, it's Ernest T, it is the Vase Trans Ice Staff, running defending on this one, it's better to run defending over power, I've tried out a whole different amalgamation of traits and setups and enchantments, this is what works absolute best, defending with a Berserker enchantment on the back bar to increase your damage as well as your healing. Now, circle back to Masters, if you're unfamiliar with what this does, it's going to give you crit trance. And is going to make your twin slashes essentially do like double the damage. All right. Base trend or the Wrath of the Elements set. Essentially, this is going to bolster your weakness to the elements. You're going to tether to your opponent. You're going to get these escalating stacks of persistent damage up to 10 seconds. And it's also going to apply all the major stats effects every seven and a half seconds. This is what we use to really keep up pressure on our opponents. Now, if you are on PC, there is an add-on, uh, Surrendar, which we'll also cover in the moment, which will track the cooldown, the proc cooldown of these proc sets and it's very very helpful if you're on console guys uh, you're, you're just gonna have to count to 10 i don't know what to tell you when it comes to the armor we are going to be rocking three light well fitted one medium well fitted and three reinforced heavy the reason we're running three reinforced heavy is quite simply the stamina sorcery needs it since you do not have access to a burst deal well technically we do which i'll cover in just a moment we are able to get around the 30k spell resist as well as 20k physical resistance which is really really powerful so the monster set we are running is marcelix this is a very very powerful monster set with a really high uptime and it really gets crazy when you have multiple people running marcelix yeah it's great if you're solo but it's even better the more people you have running this because the damage modification can stack up to 300 percent so this will do 
a minimum of 8,300 damage over four seconds. We can effectively double this with the combo I'm going to show you guys here in just a moment to get like a 16k dot over four seconds. Now, if you have a couple more people running Marslix, this can get bolstered all the way up to like 24 damage over four seconds from each person proccing Marslix, which is in an AoE, which is freaking incredible. All right, so you're going to notice soon when we go over the Mythic, the best offense is a really, really strong defense. So I do swear by this. This helps you apply a lot of pressure. It's just a phenomenal monster set. It, it, it's hard to pass up. The, the damage is absolutely incredible. We are running One Piece Trainee, Galans. It's a named item. You can get this uh, just doing the Overlands content. It always drops in Heavy Reinforce, which is awesome. So Ryan Cry, while Battle Spirit is active, critically healing yourself, you're going to get a buff that is going to give you 300 weapon and spell damage, and it's also going to give you 1650 crit resist. Now before I go on with the rest of the build, the 1650 critical res resistance that it gives you does not equate to 25% crit damage mitigation like most people believe. It's more or less around 16 or 17%. Just want to go ahead and throw that out there and clear that up so you're not misinformed. The last one piece set we're running is Druids. Again, uh, this is a craftable set, so you can any piece that you're missing, say if you don't have a correct trait of Rallying Cry or Trainee, or you need to offset your monster set somehow, uh, that's why Druids is so great, as well as Trainee. You can use this to kind of fill in the gaps to make sure you get your three light, one medium, and three heavy. When it comes to all the enchantments on the gear, usually you'll want to run all tri stats, but I'm getting kind of broke, so some of the small pieces like my shoulders as well as my boots, I only have a singular stamina enchantment. Uh, it is what it is. Us PvP folk ain't rich, okay? And last but certainly not least, which is the crux of the build, which is going to pull everything together once we go over the skills, is Ring of the Pale Order. Now, if you are solo, you will essentially get a 20% life steal from any damage that you do, literally anything. Dots, streaking, ultimate, proc sets, it doesn't matter. As long as you're doing damage, you are healing. So that's why I am pushing so much damage on this build because effectively, the more damage you do, the more you heal. So the best offense is a really strong defense. Now where Pell Order really pops off is when you have a class that has a lot of AoE dot or direct pressure, kind of like the Dragonite. So you would assume on the Sorcerer, you really don't have a lot of AoE pressure, but you actually do. You have Vase Ram, which kind of acts as the AoE. You have Marslix, which is going to act as the AoE. You have Shriek, you have Hurricane, you have Curse, which is going to splash to multiple targets. And best is your ultimate, which we are going to cover here in just a moment, which is Thriving Chaos. We're going to circle back around to this one because this is by far the best ability I have ever used. I'm actually going to start incorporating this ultimate in a lot of builds, including the Arcanist. Hopping over into the bar setup, we are running Crystal Fragments. Throughout the Rift, this is a very controversial skill you can run. You can either run Crystal Fragments or Crystal Weapons. There's pros and cons of both. Now, Crystal Weapons will give you more ongoing pressure. You technically get more damage from the other morph of this. However, Crystal Fragments is going to be super cheap to cast and it can just proc randomly. You can just throw it out. You don't have to worry about prepping it. Since we already have a really decent spammable in Rending Slashes or Blood Craze, we don't necessarily need Crystal Weapons as um, like our pseudo spammable. And also, if you run Crystal Weapons, it is going to really tap into your stamina pool. So you're going to have to run around 1400 to 1500 stamina recovery to compensate for that. You can easily do that by dropping the lover. And to me, I just feel that like less is more. The less abilities you have to prep, the less combo skills that you have to use in succession in order to get a kill the better because in open world especially on the stamina sorcerer you really don't have a lot of time to be setting a lot of this up next is haunting curse i absolutely love it now a lot of people may see that i i don't have bound armaments on the build this is amazing because it's going to give you like 3k extra health it's going to give you like eight percent extra stamina it is a really good hard hitting ability so why am i not running it well Simply put, these projectiles are very easily dodged and it just takes too much setup. It, it takes way too much setup and since I am on controller, this is very, very tough to just single someone out, especially when tab targeting isn't working. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You have to be super accurate with this ability. And to me, it's just really, really wonky and in open world, you just simply do not have time unless you're like dueling like, like a 1v1 or 1v2. In an open world scenario, this is going to cause you more harm than good, in my opinion, okay? So that's why I don't have it on the bar. If you want to run it on the bar, that's perfectly fine. You can put it in place of Camouflage Hunter. 
and then in so doing you will have to run different potions that we mentioned at the beginning of the video you will have to run these um, spell critical potions and i highly suggest you run the ones that's going to give you the health bump because healing sometimes is a problem next skill is camo hunter from the fire skill skill line this is going to bolster your weapon spell damage due to the passives and it's also going to allow you to feed from the passives of the fighter skill skill line let's say for example when you kill a vampire you're going to get ultimate back getting ultimate back is really good because it's going to fear our ultimate and our ultimate is like the best offensive slash defensive ability in the entire game it's uh it's incredible so again it's going to give you major staff for dream prophecy giving you a 10 percent extra crit chance and it will pull people out of stealth as well i do spam this pretty regularly since like 75 percent of the population is pretty much night blades that uh, this just really helps you're not force chugging the detection potions which can get kind of expensive next ability on the bar is rending slashes you can also run blood craze if you are running into healing issues if you feel like you're just not healing enough please for the love of god run blood craze it is not a bad morph it the initial hit does 10 percent less damage the dot component is still going to be the same and you still do have a high chance to apply the hemorrhage stats effect but you're also losing the snare that it provides even though we have streak it's nice to have that snare to really stay up on people now if you do decide to go with blood craze i highly suggest you swap your offhand mace instead of running sharpen i highly suggest you run charge the reason you want to run charge is because hemorrhage stats effect actually does do a lot of damage so it's important to have this up as much as physically possible so you saw here we got two ticks of hemorrhage each for a thousand this can also crit for like 1500 so hemorrhage actually does do a lot of damage and it's very very close in terms of damage uh, to the burning stats effect and not only does the hemorrhaging stats effect do damage but hemorrhaging stats effects afflicts your opponent with minor mingle reducing their maximum health by 10 percent which is huge because when you're fighting those 40k health arcanists and those 40k health wardens now they only have 36k health you have to burst through instead of the whole 40k so that's nice next is streak i prefer to have this on my front bar because i have to have that insta cc when i need it to catch people and roll dodge that is essentially the only reason this is on my front bar you can put it on your back bar a little bit easier to access because technically vigor is going to heal you a lot more on your front bar than having on your back bar but the problem with having vigor on your front bar is that you are constantly bar swapping and as bad as i hate to admit it guys the lag in serial is getting worse and worse so bar swapping is harder and harder so it's best to try to keep most of your defensive abilities in one bar and you know just keep a nice flow of things having to constantly flip flop is going to really screw you over now the main talking point of this video is going to be thrive and chaos this is the dual wield ultimate this thing is absolutely nutty it needs nerfed okay if, if the devs watch this video i'm sure you guys will because you have a habit of watching my videos and build videos and nerfing anything i talk about this ultimate is incredibly strong this has a essentially a 180 conal radius so from this line right here right here to this line right here it's gonna hit and it has a super girthy just just just, just hitbox on it like check it out like i'm hitting this ogrim all the way from back here i'm pretty sure i could even go back it is just a huge aoe radius you're going to hit people with this ability so why do you even want to hit people with this first of all well the bleed damage is astronomical but if you hit two or three people with this you are going to heal up to full almost instantaneously so you will deal a huge amount of bleed damage over eight seconds it's also going to heal you for 56 percent of the damage done but this is why it's broken and you need to level it up to level four because if you do not have this leveled up to level four you are gimping yourself okay each enemy hit increases your damage done by six percent for the duration this isn't just six percent on the ultimate this is six percent on your entire kit so effectively the best case scenario is that you get a 36 percent damage increase for eight seconds and you're not going to die when you hit six people with this every two seconds this is going to tick you up to full and unless someone bursts you within that one and a half to two second window you're going to get healed to full every single time this ticks and you have 36 percent increased damage on everything it is super cheap it's only 135 i think it's less than that of dawnbreaker very close to it so this allows you 
to apply the pressure you would not otherwise have running any other ultimate. Now, I you saw in the clips at the beginning, I ran both Thriving, Chaos, and Dawnbreaker. And let me tell you guys, had I have had Thrive and Chaos in like 90% of my 1VX scenarios, I would have been able to clutch them no problem. Yes, Dawnbreaker is great, it's cool and all, but Thrive and Chaos, nothing compares to this ultimate on your sorcerer. You have healing problems anyway, and this just completely fixes it. And keep in mind, the more damage you do, the more healing you're going to do. We have Ring of Pale Order. So when you're hitting people with this astronomically huge AoE radius, you could hit 15 people with this. I mean, realistically, you can hit NPCs, you can hit players. So even though you're only going to get the damage boost up to 36%, you're still applying this effect to everyone. So all of that healing, all of that damage, you're going to double dip. Not only is this ultimate going to heal you, but all the damage that it does, which is hellacious, which I've said like 10 times now, Ring of Pill Order is going to heal you for 20% of that. This is a nutty ultimate. It honestly, honestly needs nerfed, but we're going to keep this our little secret here on the channel, guys, and we're not going to bring too much attention to this. So this is the strongest portion of the build. I'm definitely going to start implementing this on more builds going forward. It is a phenomenal ultimate. Please, guys, give it a try. Throw it on your sorcerer. This is absolutely amazing. Swapping to the back bar, we are running Dark Deal. Be sure you have Dark Deal, not Dark Conversion, because we need to siphon our magic into health as well as stamina. And it's also going to give you Minor Berserk and Minor Force for 10 seconds. So be sure you kind of apply this like above. Even if you don't need the health or you don't need the resources, just reapply this every 10 seconds just to make sure you get those buffs. Next is Elemental Susceptibility. This is going to apply the Burning Chill and Concussed Stats effect. And it's also what we use with our Vatran Staff to uh, produce that tether. And it's also going to afflict Major Breach your opponent, reducing the resistances of around 6k, which is effectively like 10% damage. Next is Resolving Vigor. This is our uh, huge uh, healing over time. Uh, apply this every five, six, seven seconds. Apply this like you apply any other buff just to keep your healing up because once you fall down into execute range, that's not good. Your whole point is to never hit execute range to begin with because getting out of it is absolute hell. Next is Critical Surge. This is why we want to have as high as critical chance as possible on this build because every single time you get a crit, it can be from a dot, it can be from a streak. It doesn't matter where this comes from that you're going to heal for 3700 every one second. And this can crit, by the way. Next, we're running Hurricane. The reason I'm going Hurricane is because it has a much wider AoE. Hurricane as well as Critical Surge pair very well together. For example, if you cannot go on the offensive, you always have Hurricane ticking on everyone who is aping you. So each and every single time you get a crit from this, you're actually healing, which is super, super strong. And it's also going to give you Minor Expedition, which is good. And this is also your source of Major Resolve. Last in the bar is Temporal Guard. This is essentially here for the Sigic Order Shield for when you block, and it's also here for the Minor Protection while you're on your back bar. There's never a scenario where you will ever want to prioritize Temporal Guard over Thrive and Chaos. The only scenario I can think of is if you're on a bridge and someone Magnum shots you into the water to feed you to the Slaughterfish. This will just you know help you reset and get back to the top of the bridge and screw that Nightblade. Okay, so this is the combo section. I'm going to spend a little bit of time here because it's important for you guys to get the most negative effects you can possibly can on your opponent before proccing Mars Slicks. Okay, so we're going to look at this as one quarter speed. So the very first thing you, you want to do is apply all your buffs and debuffs. You'll want to use Haunting Curse to lead off from your opponent. You want to light attack bar swap if you're within range. Apply elemental weapons, light attack to get the berserker damage enchantment from bar rending slashes into a medium weave, and then you will want to streak. You're going to streak 180 frag. And if you do this in time, if you do this very cleanly and very precise, here's what's going to happen. First of all, you need to have as many negative effects as you can. Look how many negative effects we have before we apply Marslix. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven negative effects. You can also get minor magic steel on this one, uh, you know, just kind of depending on RNG. So we have eleven negative effects. It's going to bolster the damage of Marslix by 110%. Now you're going to streak after the medium weave and check check it out here. We actually got really lucky. We actually got a uh, minor magic is still 
off of uh, I, I don't know what I I think Curse Prog Minor Magic is still uh, which is really uh, really convenient actually. So right here at this point you still have minor uh, you still have minor vulnerability or the concussed status effect active. Okay, and this is why you want to apply in this order because if you do this in any other order, your concussed status effect is going to fall off and then your your follow up frag is going to do five percent less damage. So right here. We technically got the damage number off and then we still had the concussed ass effect. So this was like literally like a few frames of not being pulled off. So but with a little practice, you can get this combo down. OK, guys, it's a little intimidating at first and you're not always going to get it on the first try. And there's all kinds of situations to where you will not necessarily have to do the combo in this rotation. And some it, it just really depends. It's open world, guys. But as a cookie cutter way of thumb, if you are going to set up your combo this is how i would do it now i'm going to play it back in full speed just so you guys can get a grasp of um, how quickly you need to do this you can do all this within five seconds and uh, it is actually not that bad with a little bit of practice so just go get a dummy practice this over and over for like half an hour and you'll get it in no time now we're going to take a look at our cmx and notice during that entire time the most damage that we got from any not our rending slashes not our hurricane not our curse not our frag marslux is actually hitting harder than all of that and just one rule of thumb marslux cannot crit like no matter what so that is kind of of a downside but i'm gonna take a look here the dps on marslux is 3100 which is absolutely incredible and this only goes up the more few people you have running it and again this is the aoe cone effect so you're applying this damage to a metric crap load of people and you're going to heal because of ring and pillar giving you the 20 percent life still it's a very very strong monster i highly suggest you guys go farm it and try it out and one thing I did not include in the combo is when do you actually use Thrive and Chaos? And to be honest, guys, just use it when you have a bunch of people in front of you and they're all grouped together. You're going to essentially use Thrive and Chaos to pre-buff your combo. So ideally, you'll get a 36% increase to your overall damage and you're going to have amalgamation of healing to sustain you so you're not stuck having to go to your back bar or resource management. This is going to sustain you just so you can get your combo off on whoever you're focusing. All right, so let's take a look at the add-on I'm using to keep track of Way of Fire and Wrath of the Alien. It's also Rallying Cry. Rallying Cry is not popping up, but take a look. I use uh, Wrath of the Elements and then I Medium Weave for Marsh Looks. Again, guys, you don't have to complete a fully charged heavy. You can Medium Weave Animation Cancel to get Marsh Looks, okay? So you see how I have the proc cooldowns in the middle of my screen there? Well, we do this by Surrendar. So Surrendar is awesome. It's very easy to do. All this looks like super confusing when you first do your cast bar, auras, profiles. It's like, oh my god, what am I doing? What am I doing? The only thing you have to worry about is um, by default, all of your proc cooldowns will be displayed in window nine. So what I do since I have all of the uh, gamepad UIs disabled and I have it to my liking, you can come here and customize uh, literally however you want it. But this is how I have a nice clean UI. I have literally everything disabled because nothing drives me more crazy than seeing like 50 positive buffs across the bottom of your screen that that, that 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 stuff is just so annoying to me man it just makes gameplay look so terrible so i literally have everything turned off and then your proc cooldowns which is going to be window 9 when you go in to unlock this it'll have all the windows right here you can move them around however you want i have everything on display 9 i have everything else turned off just be sure be, just be sure to go back and lock this uh once you're done and just have that position wherever you want to and uh, that is uh, literally it that is all you have to do it should have all of the prop cooldown stock into the add-on itself um, i'm pretty sure there's very very few procs you'll actually have to go through and whitelist but uh, that's a video for another time so hopping over into the champion points this is very conservative you don't necessarily have to go this defensive route as i have uh, i just prefer it this way so the first cp is focus mending this buffs the healing on pretty much everything that we do including blood craze this buffs the healing from blood craze every single time it hits you get like 900 or so um, from the ticks this also buffs dark conversion crit surge vigor into my understanding it also busts thriving chaos healing instead of that 56 percent now it's 66 percent which is incredible deadly aim now deadly aim is for single target attacks as well as single damage over time so curse technically counts as a single target ability your frags counts as a single target your rending slashes is both single target and dot damage so what deadly strike does not buff 
it's thriving chaos it does not buff streak it does not buff hurricane and but it also does buff the damage from wrath of the alien and the status effects thereof so that is pretty cool raffle strikes is the second cp i went with because since we have such an amalgamation of different damage types we have single direct damage or we do have biting ores with aoe so marcelix counts as aoe as well as dot damage so in order to buff marcelix even further you have to go with biting ores and thaumaturge which is pretty annoying and the mastered arms is like half and half so it's just better to go with raffle strikes because this is going to give a damage boost to all of your abilities all the time and last but certainly not least is ironclad hopping over into the red cp i'm going fortify because this is mitigation all the time it's always useful sustained by suffering you're always going to have a negative effect on you so this is just free recovery pain's refuge since i don't have a purge on this build you have amalgamation of negative effects on you at all times so this damage mitigation stacks very very well with the undeath passive and last but not least is survival instincts since we do like to roll dodge a lot on this build just having any status effect whatsoever this is going to decrease the cost of break free roll dodge blocking this is an absolute must of a cp to have in my opinion if you're 1vxing thank you guys so much for watching until the end if you have any questions please let me know in the discord or down in the towel section below i will be available to answer anything that i may have missed i do stream pretty much daily on both youtube and twitch so if you haven't followed me on twitch as well as youtube you got the bell notification icon otherwise youtube's not going to tell you when i go live youtube kind of sucks in that matter but yes go follow me on twitch i want to be a part of the ESO stream team i need a thousand followers i think we're at like 9 30 at the point of recording this video so it would be awesome if i could hit a thousand followers on twitch i would actually do a huge ass giveaway for you guys and as always a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons as well as my community members you guys are absolutely amazing and i hope you guys really enjoy the bugatti sorcerer build and i'll catch you all in the next one peace